Hello and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Hartson. We have another fantasy file on the way today. This time, we'll be talking about Kirk Cousins, who doesn't have a ton of fans out there, both in the real life and fantasy world. I would argue a bit unfairly. I understand that when you're paid as much money as this guy, you want some better results. So, not saying Vikings fans, you have every reason to be thrilled by this guy, but let's break it down here. Look, they signed, the Vikings signed Kirk Cousins to a three-year, $84 million contract in 2018. They gave him a two-year, $66 million extension in March 2020. I know some are looking at the Kellen Mond pick and saying, hey, you know, could he actually, uh, you know, be fighting with Kirk for snaps? You know, if you ask RG3, he doesn't have many good things to say about uh, what Kirk brings to the table. But truly, people, I mean, if they go ahead and cut Kirk Cousins at any point uh, before his contract's up, like they're just going to be eating so much money, June first or whatever. I mean, if they release him at any point in 2022, they're going to have 45 million dollars of dead money. So if they want to get rid of him, and people are not high on Kirk Cousins, which We'll get to the stats. I don't think they should be low on the guy. Uh, they would need to trade him. If they trade him, they can only have a uh, $10 million in dead money, and they would actually have a good amount of cap savings because someone would be taking on the majority of that contract. But just realize, you know, unless Kellen Mond comes in, just absolutely lights it up at practice, which I'm not exactly anticipating, I would be very surprised if Kirk Cousins is not the Vikings starting quarterback for this year and likely next year as well. And again, for a good reason. You look at since he started wearing purple in 2018, we got 50 qualified QBs and Cousins has ranked 7th in PFF passing grade he's tied for 11th with Russell Wilson in yards per attempt he's 4th in adjusted completion rate and he's 7th in quarterback rating so look he's been pretty damn good and I understand we didn't love the results from last year but we had to give some you know give some slack because the offense for once was not the issue in Minnesota last season I mean they had the 11th ranked scoring offense the problem was they were 29th in points per game against and Mike Zimmer, I mean, he said it before last season. He was like, I've never had a bad defense. I don't plan on starting now. Unfortunately, Zimmer had a bad defense in the year 2020. But I think people, you know, we took advantage of in fantasy, but I don't know if we realized just how bad they were. Because if you look at the difference in offensive points per game and defensive points per game, the three teams by far that just had the largest difference in that were the Titans, fourth-ranked offense, 24th-ranked defense, the Raiders, 10th-ranked offense, 30th-ranked defense, and the Vikings at, again, 11th and 20. Ninth. So this was truly a very good offense and a very bad defense in Minnesota last year. So I think if you would have paired what Cousins did last season, maybe with your typical Vikings defense during the Zimmer era, people would probably have remembered his season a lot more fondly. I mean, 35 passing touchdowns, people. It's legit. And again, he's been doing it with the efficiency as well. I think the most impressive part, too, like Cousins is not this dink and dunk Jimmy G you know, late career Drew Brees, uh, you know, 2020 Jared Goff type guy that's getting this high completion rate because he's just not taking chances downfield. The only guys with a higher adjusted completion rate than Cousins since 2018 are Drew Brees, Derek Carr, and Teddy Bridgewater. Cousins has averaged at least 0.8 additional yards of target depth over each of those guys. Cousins is throwing the ball downfield and he's doing it really accurately. Now, the issue is in fantasy land, he doesn't run anymore. I mean, look, he had 13 rushing touchdowns in his final 48 games with Washington. He only has three in his first 47 games with the Vikings. So we've never had the rushing floor for Cousins. He's not even a guy that's going to give you 10 rushing yards per game. He can move. He's not, you know, Jared Goff or Jimmy G back there. You see him get used a lot in the play action game. He's great uh, throwing on the run and all that. It's just we don't get any, we don't get the rushing touchdowns anymore. We've never gotten the rushing floor. And because of that, I mean, Last year, Cousins really overcame that and was the QB 12 in fantasy points per game. Before that, he was the QB 19. Before that, the QB 16. The Vikings want to run the ball. Kirk does not want to run the ball. So, and other run first offenses, you know, the Ravens. Uh, maybe the 49ers with Trey Lance, potentially the Eagles with Jalen Hurts. We can live with the quarterback in a run-first offense if they are also running the ball. It's a lot harder uh, when it's pass-first. Like Even Ryan Tannehill gives us a solid rushing floor. It's why he's been able to be a top-12 QB while Cousins has not. Now, as pure passers, they're right there in the same conversation in real life, not so much in fantasy just because of that rushing floor. So can't stress just how important that is. And it's why we see guys you know, that like Josh Allen, for example, yeah, it's 
It took him until 2020 to be an elite real-life quarterback. He was always an elite fantasy quarterback because it's a silly game we play that rewards rushing yards for QBs. You know, it's like the pass-catching RBs. It's the closest thing we have to a cheat code in fantasy land are these dual-threat players. That is not Kirk Cousins. With that said, though, we could maybe get the best version of him yet in Minnesota here in 2021. I invite you all to check out uh, PFF's own Seth Galina's piece on PFF.com about how Cousins is a dark horse MVP candidate I'm just going to go ahead and read the final few paragraphs of this article. And his main point throughout this article is that they fortified their offensive line through the 2021 draft. And because of the way Cousins just plays, I mean, fixing that offensive line, the manner they did could really help. So this is from Seth's article. Cousins can still hold on to the ball now, but this hopefully means fewer defenders are in his face. The same Kirk Cousins is so much better with a stronger offensive line around him. If he becomes a better version of himself, the sky's the limit, although that might be wishful thinking. Just creeping to average would be an improvement for this offensive line. The front offense has made the right moves to do that. That puts the ball in Kirk's court. The pieces are significantly better than they've ever been around him. Subtracting the timeless skill of Stephon Diggs by replacing him with Justin Jefferson, Ezra Cleveland, Christian Darisol, and Wyatt Davis is probably a net positive. Everything is set up for Cousins to have a brilliant 2021 season and further congratulations to Kirk Cousins for winning the NFL's MVP award prophecy to be fulfilled. People, 30th ranked offensive line and cumulative pass block grade over the past three years. And as Seth was pointing out, Cousins does hold the ball. I believe he was 25th in average time to attempt last year. But, you know, if that's your quarterback, that's the guy you're paying all this money to, let's design an offense that makes him holding the ball okay. That is seemingly what they did. And, yeah, mention Justin Jefferson. You guys don't need me to tell you how fantastic he was as a rookie. Adam Thielen's going to be 31 soon, but it's not like he's made his career uh, just running away from dude. I mean, okay, we can. He's of course always going to have that sneaky athletic moniker that we want to give every single white wide receiver. But I really don't think Thielen has the type of game that's going to necessarily fall off a cliff. I mean, it's not like he was separating a ton already in the last couple of years. The dude catches everything thrown in his area. He's still a great route runner, and he's got the chemistry with Kirk that he just he only needs like a seemingly a foot of separation. Sometimes not even that uh, for them to hook up. We got a potentially special young tight end in Irv Smith. Can't say enough good things about him. I'm just not sure the targets are overall going to be there. And uh, the ever-fantastic Dalvin Cook. Can't forget him, of course. So the pass catchers are there. Improved O-line could lead to the best version of Kirk yet. You know, should we be in on him in fantasy? <sighs> I don't really think we need to. And before we get to the exact fantasy rank, my PFF Lily stat... Only Aaron Rodgers with 12 had more games with more than, with at least three passing touchdowns than Kirk Cousins, who had eight such games last season. That's crazy to me, people. Again, I, I knew Kirk played all right last year, but I didn't know he was kind of offering that ceiling. Again, Rodgers 12, Kirk Cousins had eight such games. You had Brady and Russ Wilson at seven, and then Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes at six, you know. Again, the lack of any sort of rushing floor is what kind of hurt that. The fact that Kirk had had that good of a season and only be the QB 12 in fantasy points per game tells you all you kind of need to know. So, look, Kirk, he's my QB 21. He has an ADP of QB 18. I wouldn't, you know despise anyone that ranks him as QB 18, even QB 17, QB 16. But to me, like Jameis Winston, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Baker Mayfield, I think they have higher ceilings because I am going to trust Zimmer that he fixed the defense enough in 2021 and beyond. I don't see this like Tennessee and to a larger extent Seattle fellow offenses that want to run the ball. I don't think they had the defenses to hold up. The Vikings didn't have the defense last year, but you look at their draft, you look at some of the guys that could be getting back. Hopefully the the, the Neil Hunter situation uh, results in him, you know, still wearing purple for the foreseeable future. And I just think that his pass attempts, again, like career high 35 yard, 35 touchdowns uh, through the air last year. Like Cousins is basically coming off a career year. I could see the 2021 Vikings being a better real life team. And if Aaron Rodgers leaves the division, I mean, I I think we'd have to say Minnesota are, are the favorites. And if Kirk has a great year, maybe he gets like the better national, uh, you know, spotlight, more attention. And he's just, you know, so efficient that he ends up kind of having this dark horse MVP campaign, as Seth was uh, pointing out, just by virtue of being a good starting quarterback on a playoff team. I'm just not convinced it's going to lead to a ton of fantasy football goodness. Again, he doesn't run We're we have Questions about the pass game volume, and that's a massive problem. You can be as efficient as you want, but if you're not being asked to throw the ball more than 20, 25 times a game sometimes, that's going to be problematic. I mean, truly, people, like Cousins last year, 
You look at some of these games, 14 pass attempts against Green Bay in a win, only 25 pass attempts against Green Bay in a nine point loss, 26 pass attempts against the Colts in a loss, 27 against Titans, 22 against the Texans. Like and this was even better than it was in 2019. Like that's my concern. We just, they just have these games, you know, for week one of 2019, Kirk Cousins threw the ball 10 times in a 28 to 12 win. Like they are not going to put more on his plate than they need to. Dalvin Cook, this offensive line, this defense, Mike might be good enough to get the Vikings back into this 10-win territory, and they just don't need Kirk to really overextend himself. So that's not you know, why are you paying a guy that you don't want to do more than game manage that much money? That's a very good question. I don't have a good answer for it. I'm just saying, you know, for my job, fantasy football, staying in my lane, I do not think Cousins fits the archetype of a player we should be looking for. You know, Matt Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think those are the better later round options. And yeah, even Jamison Baker, I just think there's uh, more room for their coaching staff to so probably trust them with a higher, more fantasy-friendly role. And hey, people, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you just want to get more of the real-life picture on everything. That's fine. I don't blame you. I certainly love that myself. And I invite you to check out PFS Podcast Network to do so. It features everything NFL, college, and fantasy football. You can recap the NFL draft and look ahead to 2022 at Mike Renner and Austin Gale's Two for One Drafts Podcast, or get all the 2021 betting content you need with the PFF Forecast. And I also invite you all, if you want to play some best ball, get in the fantasy fantasy game here in the summer months if you like fantasy football if you like playing fantasy for money you need to check out underdog fantasy underdog's got everything including season long and playoff best ball best ball is a season long game where you draft a team like you normally do but that's it there's no in-season roster management underdog automatically selects your best performers each week saving you loads of time go to underdog fantasy and deposit ten dollars using promo code pff and get a free pff edge annual subscription that's promo code pff draft now at underdog fantasy Thank you, as always, for tuning in, everybody. Always appreciate you here on the PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. You can check out my work over there at pff.com. If you've enjoyed these fantasy files, I'm also writing articles on the same subjects. Got even more detail in there, and you can check those out one at a time over at pff.com. Also, catch me on tw- Twitter streets at iHeartIt. So thank you, as always, for tuning in. And until next time, take care, everybody.